your true authentic self. You got to be willing to allow God to break you down. At church, we have this uh, women's ministry called DDS. And I used to be on the Hope team, which is the, the team that intercedes for the women that are in this ministry. And I remember this one particular night, I was um, gathering all the prayer requests. And as I'm gathering the prayer requests, I normally stop and pray with some of the other ladies. But then the Holy Spirit told me to take the all the requests and take it into the sanctuary. And if you're in Maryland, you know, um, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, it's a big, it's a mega church. And so I walk in the sanctuary. And when I walk in the sanctuary, I go to the front and I lay all of the requests right there on the altar. So then I take my anointing oil and I started anointing every prayer request that was right there. And as I started praying and asking God to, to do a, a thing inside of the ladies that were going through their pain, whatever it was, I was asking God to mend the broken pieces. And as I'm praying and praying and talking about Lord, mend their broken pieces, the Holy Spirit said, I need you to lay your broken pieces down so that I can heal them too. When I say I was wrecked after that, y'all, I was wrecked because what was going on is my focus was being so much on making sure that I'm trying to do what I needed to do for somebody else that I didn't recognize that my broken pieces that I had within myself needed to be healed. You can't pray or do anything for anybody else if you're broken. All your broken pieces do is add to the trauma or the drama of the person you call yourself trying to pray for or you trying to encourage. And what a lot of people don't realize when you still broken and you jacked up from the floor up and you trying to figure out how do I get out of drive? You going to mess up. So you put yourself in a position that you're now bleeding on the top of somebody else who's already bleeding. This is the problem that we have when we're going through this life and we're doing things that are not of God. So now here we are, we're being an imposter and in our imposter syndrome, now we're doing and acting certain ways that we shouldn't be acting because now all of those things are going to add on to somebody else and they add burdens onto them. And then you walk away and more burdens come. So you got to understand what is your relationship? When I sit there and I prayed and the Lord said, you need to lay your broken pieces down so that I can mend them for you as well. By the time I finished praying and got through wiping my nose and everything else, I knew God had healed me because I was feeling so different. I was light. Whatever the weight was or whoever's weight it was, it was off of me. And when God freed me, then all I knew is that, okay, daddy, now I can see you move. And that's what he did. I was able to see God move. I saw God move and transform other people's lives. Why? Because now when I said what I said, it was happening. It says out of your mouth and out of my mouth, when I was saying the things, praying over laying heads, people were getting healed. Lives were changing. Things were happening. And it wasn't that I saw it right then and there, but then it could be a month, two months later, a year later, somebody come back and say, hey, you remember when you prayed for me? No, I don't. Well, when you prayed and the Lord did A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it warms your heart. Because when you're obedient, God lets you see your fruit. He lets you witness and bear witness to things that he's already said or done for someone else. You cannot be who you are if you do not come out of your imposter syndrome. It is not going to work. Don't be a carbon copy.